Today I'm going to present the inventory planning module. So inventory planning dashboard is this screen here under the inventory menu, it's called inventory planning. Uh, you can see here that you have a, a top pane with item location combination appearing in this top pane. If you want an item location to appear in this top pane, you need first of all to enter inventory planning parameters for that item location. So here in inventory planning parameter screen, you need to add a record for this item location and put some business rule, safety stock minimum, service level, arrow queue minimum, any kind uh, of business rule. And then you're going to see this item location in the inventory planning screen. Uh, you have two ways actually to uh, populate this table. You can either add a record with the plus sign here or by uh, importing an Excel file, for instance. Uh, but you can also provide uh, segments and business rules uh, to uh, give some uh, business rule to an item location. So first of all, you need to define a segment. A segment is a collection of item locations sharing a query, sharing property. So here in this example, I have all balls at shops. And you see that it's a SQL query that you have to provide. And um, Frepol is going to estimate that uh, is going to count the item location combination matching that, that query. And we're talking here about six item location. So uh, you can define as many uh, segments as you want. Uh, an item location combination can belong to different segments. It's not a problem. And once you have defined your segments, then you can define the business rules against the segments. Um, the business rules, for instance, here for all balls at shops, we're saying that we want a arrow queue minimum period of cover of 90 days. So if you can have a look at the description, so three months of forecast minimum when replenishing. So if you do that, all the balls at shops will have um, a business rule, so they will show up in the inventory planning screen. So if I go back now to the inventory planning screen, you can see that I have, as I said, my item location. You can filter your item location by segments. So if I want to see all my balls at shops, I can click on all balls at shops and I'm going to have all my balls at shops. Um, let's have a quick look at the data that is displayed on the, on the right side of the pane. So here uh, I have uh, the inventory status. Inventory status is very convenient to let you know which item location are, I would say, in danger. Um, the percentage corresponds to the amount of safety stock that is going to be remaining in one lead time from now. So if you have 0%, it means that you can face a stock out because in one lead time from now, you're not going to have anything left uh, for this item location. Uh, here, 130%, so I'm going to have more than my safety stock in one lead time from now, so I'm good. And this 88%, I'm, let's say I'm good because I'm, I'm starting to grind my safety stock in one lead time from now, but like just 12% of my safety stock, so I should be okay. Um, then we have the lead time, the cost of the, of the item, the for, the local forecast for this item location combination. Is there a dependent forecast? Meaning that is there a kind of, uh, pass through forecast? So am I, am I going to need to send this to a, uh, another location that is going to consume that forecast, then safety stock, reorder quantity on hand, and then some other metrics here. Uh, I can click on any of this combination. Let's take this one, for instance. And here is going to display um, the uh, shape of the inventory for the next uh, weeks or months, depending on your uh, buckets and horizons. So <clears throat> here you see the green line is uh, the on hand for uh, the upcoming buckets. Then I have uh, my safety stock, which is uh, very low here. It's less than uh, than 10. And my reorder quantity, which is this orange line up there. Uh, each bar here is uh, producing or consuming. So here I have a producing operation, meaning that I'm replenishing my stock here. And then all the yellow bars here is consumption. Um, if I look at the table here, uh, we understand. Let, let's have a quick look how this is working first. So. I have the start inventory, so at the beginning of the horizon, I have a quantity of 20. Then uh, at the end of the uh, of the week, sorry, of the of the week, I'm going to end with um, 13. So how did I lose my seven? It's because here I have some demand. So it's a local demand that is. Um, so I have the sum here of local and dependent that is giving me the total demand. So I have seven here that are going to be 
consumed. So this is forecast in this example that is going to consume um, my inventory. So I'm going to end up with 13 at the end of this week. Obviously, I'm going to start the following one with 13. Then I have another uh, consumption of six. So I'm finishing at seven, starting at seven. And then I have a consumption of seven, but I also have a replenishment of 317. So uh, at the end of the uh, week, I'm going to finish at 317, starting at 317 the week after. Uh, and then I'm just going to consume, as you can see here, my um, on hand until it's, it's very visible here. I'm going to consume my on hand until this point where I'm going to get replenished again. So this is sometime in February. So if I look in February here, yes, I can see my replenishment of 276. So we have a couple of rows that I want to explain. First of all, start inventory days of cover is how much the 17 uh, is going to give you as, as days of cover. So how many days you will be able to supply uh, your demand uh, with this 17, uh, sorry, with this 20 and this is 17 days. So here with 13, I can leave 10 days. So this gives you like a, a rough amount of days uh, where you have enough stock basically to, to, to supply uh, the demand. Um, see, when I have a large replenishment here of 317, I have 143 days of cover. Then you can see this row, this is a safety stock. So here I have a safety stock of eight uh, for the first week, then seven for the following week. So how is this safety stock computed? Here you can see that you have um, the computed safety stock eight. So this is the same value as here. It's coming from a service level. So I have for this item location, a service level of 98% that is giving me eight units of safety stock. So service level is a percentage which corresponds to uh, how often basically, is how often if a customer enters a shop in a distribution model, uh, he or she is going to find uh, the product on the shelf. In 2% of the case, you're gonna have, you're gonna face a stock out and then um, you, you agree with that because you're asking for a service level of 98%. The exclamation mark here, the small sign that you can see on the right, means that this 98% is coming from a segment slash business rule um, computation. So we have uh, provided uh, this information, the 98% through a business rule. Then <clears throat> the demand standard deviation here is computed by Frepol. Uh, it's telling you that the standard deviation here is four based on the uh, demand history of this item location. Um, this is a computed field. And obviously, if the deviation is high, then the safety stock is going to be higher uh, even for the same service level. So if I had like uh, 10 or 20 here for 98, I would have maybe more. And actually, I can test it with a quick simulation. If I have 20 here, I can check, I can recalculate. And you see, yeah, immediately my safety stock is jumping from 8 to 43. So... Um, you can see also that we have this uh, simulation capabilities with this recalculate button here. So I'm going to just undo to switch back to eight. Um, the lead time standard deviation is something that is not uh, computed. It's an input uh, from the planner. So the lead time standard deviation is if you have a supplier that is uh, sometimes uh, replenishing you in three weeks and sometimes it's five weeks, sometimes it's two weeks, but in Freepol you have said for instance two weeks, but it's never two weeks, could be more than that. So you have a deviation. You can provide this deviation and Frepal will account for it when computing the safety stock. Um, then we have this field is you can correct the safety stock that has been computed by Frepal. So here you say that you see that the value is eight. You can put, for instance, if you think that eight might not be enough, you want to have always a minimum of 12. So you can put a 12 here and recalculate. You see now that the safety stock has moved from eight to 12 for every row. So I'm gonna undo that. And on the country, you can also put a max. You can say, okay, here it's it's seven, but maybe I don't wanna have more than five. So you put five here, you recalculate, and you see that now it's five. Uh, obviously, you can put a min and a max. So it's going to compute, uh, Freeport is going to compute the safety stock based on the service level, then it's going to apply these rules to make sure that uh, they are respected. And also these rules, which are period of cover rules. So period of cover rules means 
I want to have a safety stock, for instance, that is uh, covering for 14 days. So if I do that and I recalculate, you see that the safety stock now is much more. If I want to have 14 days of safety stock, um, then it's 33, 35, etc. And because the forecast is moving in time, the safety stock is moving in time because 14 days of period of cover depends on when do you put the start of these 14 days. So I'm going to undo this. So this is it for uh, the safety stock. And next thing that uh, Fripple is, recom is computing is the reorder quantity. So the reorder quantity is, first of all, computed based on the Wilson formula. It's the economic order quantity uh, that uh, corresponds to uh, how much optimally you should uh, buy. And this is computed based on some parameters that you're going to find in the parameter table. And here Fripple finds 302 uh, units. So uh, this is why I have a reorder quantity of 302 units for this bucket. Then because uh, the forecast is changing, then the value can change also for uh, the reorder quantity. Then same, same as we did for the forecast, you can cap uh, the value. Here it's 302. You see that uh, it's a large quantity for uh, the forecast. Basically, we can, we can just have one purchase. Okay, we have another one here, but we just have one purchase to cover almost six months of demand. So maybe that's a bit too much. You can uh, say, for instance, that you don't want to buy more than 20. And if you put a 20 here and you recalculate, you see immediately that now we have much more purchases, like we're buying every 20 days, roughly. And it's, uh, it's, this is giving me much more uh, replenishment. So it's a complete different, it's a complete different, uh, uh graph for uh, the on hand. I'm going to undo that. And the same way, uh, the same way you have the period of cover for the safety stock, you also have period of cover for, uh, the reorder quantity. And here you see that it's a value that is, uh, derived from a business rule saying that each time you buy, you buy, you want to buy for three months. Uh, then you have some stocking policies um, that you can set at item location level. You can set a do not stock. You can put it to true and Frepol is not going to stock this uh, item location at that location. And you can activate the push mode. So this is uh, the push mode is when you just want to push everything uh, downstream. So if you have an RDC and you want to push all your stock of the RDC downstream to the to the shops, then you can activate this push mode and Frepol will move everything downstream. So <clears throat> here in this screen, you see that we've been, uh, uh, we have just explained only one tab. It's the plan tab. Uh, we have much more tabs. So we have the forecast tab, which is going to show me the forecast uh, for this item location. So here I can see the demand history in green. I can see the forecast that has been computed. You see that there is some seasonality definitely for this item location. Uh, you can see uh, the forecast that has been computed, which is the last, sorry, which is the forecast baseline, which has been computed. Then you can override that forecast. Here we have not done it. But if you override that forecast, then you have the total forecast uh, at the end of the, uh, which is the last line uh, of this, um, um, of this graph. So the forecast is quite interesting. Sometimes if you want to have a uh, indication on the safety stock, uh, what the safety stock should be, you can have a look at the forecast. So it's very convenient to jump uh, from the plan tab to the forecast tab. Uh, then we have the attributes tab, which is going to show me attributes of the item. You're going to see location attributes also. So for the item, it's uh, the cost and some information on the sales, uh, the sales orders for the past. Then you have the inventory status that we have discussed. So you see that the current on hand is uh, 20. The um, safety stock is eight here and the uh, reorder quantity is 302. And what is going to be the on hand that lead time is going to be seven in one lead time from now. So this is why we have this 88% of inventory status because this is uh, seven divided by eight. Then you can see the top five customer and then network status. So here we don't have any PO, DO or MO uh, 
uh, in the pipe so everything is at zero but otherwise you would have values here and some supply information so uh, which how do i get replenished for this item location so i get replenished for rdc rdc it's a transport uh, operation and it's a three daily time then next tab we can have a look at is uh, transactions so here in transactions you will see all the transactions that have been proposed by Freepal for this item location so uh, here in this case uh, because it's a node it's a uh, it's only DO inbound transaction to replenish, but transactions are uh, inbound and outbound. If you can, we can have a look at an item at RDC. So RDC is the parent of the two shops, uh, Paris and Brussels. So here RDC, you see that I have DO outbound. So DO leaving the RDC uh, to replenish uh, the shops. And this is why I have uh, negative quantities here because we are losing inventory. But I have also POs which are uh, purchased from the supplier, and these POs have uh, obviously positive uh, quantities. You have, you can see here all the transactions in time associated with an item location. And again, whenever you do a simulation, so if I go back to my 88%, uh, you see here that I have three transactions. When I change at some point in the demo uh, the reordered quantity to be 20 maximum, and if I recalculate here. You see that I have much more replenishment now, and this is obviously repercuted on the uh, transaction side. You can see all the deals now that I have because my arrow queue is completely different. So if I uh, undo that, I'm going to be back at my three deals. Um, so next thing I want to show for inventory planning is the PO screen. So uh, for the PO screen, you can see that uh, Freepol is going to give here a summary of all the purchase order for uh, proposed by Freepol to uh, meet the demand. So all these purchase order here, uh, you can click on any of them. You will see some information. So uh, wh what item are we talking about? When is it uh, or when should it be ordered and received? What is the quantity? Uh, where is it to be received? What is the inventory status for this item uh, as we speak? Then the material, what is uh, expected on hand? What is received? What is the date? then which demand is pegged to this purchase order. So which demand are going to use the, the material of this purchase order. And here it's uh, only forecast. So this is uh, for the PO and we also have the same uh, for the DOs. So distribution order, all the distribution order that are proposed by Freepol. So you can sort them, you can rank by, uh, you can sort by shipping date, you can uh, also uh, I put a segment, you just want to see the balls at shops, then you can use this filtering. I'm going to remove it here. And then you see uh, the inventory status, which is uh, what we discussed before. And what is going to be uh, the safety stock of uh, this uh, item location in one week time from now. So this allows you to immediately spot the POs that are uh, urgent, those that need to be expediting because the, uh, the inventory status is close to uh, zero percent. So that's it for the inventory planning video. I hope you enjoyed it.